Fish Care is an educational program to help recreational fishers reduce the impact on the marine environment. There are five principles in the Fish Care program. The second principle is handling and release. Learning how to handle fish in the best possible way so that when they're released, they have the best chance of survival. It's always best to handle a fish as little as possible. This reduces the chance of the scales or the mucus, the protective slime, being removed from the fish. When that happens, the fish are far more susceptible to infection. And while they may swim away quickly from the boat and strongly, they may still succumb to infection days or weeks later. The easiest way to release fish without using your hands is to file or crush the barbs on your hooks and then you can use a pair of pliers to flick the hook out of the fish's mouth while it's still in the water. This applies to both bait fishing and lure fishing. If it's difficult or unsafe to release a fish in the water because the boat is rocking or perhaps you're fishing off the rocks, the next best thing is to use a rubber net to scoop the fish up and release the fish that way. If you've caught a fish that you want to photograph before you release, make sure you use wet hands to handle it before you take the photograph. Also, try and work very quickly so it reduces the amount of time the fish is out of the water. And please don't put your fingers or hands in the gills or the eyes. When you hold the fish up, support it under the chin and under the body when you take the photo. It's common practice of fishers to use wet towels when handling fish. Although common practice is not best practice, recent research has indicated that wet hands are actually a much better option for handling fish and less likely to do damage and remove the mucus from the fish. Wet towels, even though they're wet, the fabric can still remove that protective layer of slime. Still, carry a towel, use it on your hands afterwards at the end of the day or after you've handled a fish. If you're pulling up fish from 20 metres or more, some species may suffer from barotrauma. Barotrauma is where the fish is unable to equalise in pressure as it is pulled from the bottom to the surface. Signs of barotrauma may be bulging eyes or a distended gut from the mouth or the vent. If you do catch a fish you have to release from a depth where the fish is suffering from barotrauma, the best thing to use is a descender rig. This helps get the fish back down to the depth it came from. Descender rigs are fairly easy to make. You need a fairly heavy sinker, 16 ounces or more, a pair of fish grips, and it's tied onto the main line. We've drilled holes in the top and the bottom of the handles, and when you catch the fish, attach that to the jaw. <laughs> Carefully put it in the water, and when it's down near the bottom, or it reaches the bottom, jerk it, and the fish is released. It's pretty simple. If you don't have a descender rig to be able to return the fish back down to depth and relieve the symptoms of barotrauma, the next best thing is to actually carefully puncture the extended stomach that's coming out of the mouth or out of the vent. This will release the pressure and enable the fish to swim back down to depth. An Australian study showed that survival rates are actually fairly good when this method is used. You can use the tip of a hook or possibly an icky spike to be able to do this carefully. If you have gut hooked an undersized fish that you need to release back to the water, the best thing to do is to cut the line close to the fish's mouth. Don't try and remove the hook, this is likely to do more damage. As Kiwis, we are incredibly lucky to have access to the amazing marine environment and inshore fishery that we have. If we all play our part and show maximum respect by using best practice fishing techniques, future generations will thank us. Legacy wants to thank the following people for their help in producing this video and their ongoing support of Legacy.